Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we are going to do more space plane examination and testing because it is clear from the comments that obviously the Puck 6 was inadequate in many respects and I would like to develop something a little bit better. Uh, though we've got one hanging out in orbit already and for those who didn't catch the video, the purpose of the Puck 6 is to try and rescue a Kerbal on the surface of Lathe in fairly rugged terrain, which is why we are planning to land via parachute. And we have 12 parachutes there. Now, people made a lot of comments, and uh, I will address these comments. I have taken a little bit of break, uh, a little bit of a break uh, from developing this in order to develop the Orion 3 space plane, a completely different space plane, a different uh, context, and thankfully that worked the way I expected it to. Uh, unlike this, uh, because that was not in stock, this that was with far and everything. So uh, addressing the difference between far and here, uh, there were some comments. Uh, this might work great. I wouldn't say it would work great in far, but the the stuff hanging out on the top and such. Uh, would not have as much of an effect as apparently people think it does in stock. Uh, one person said, If you were playing with FAR, wouldn't you want to cover up the exposed ends of the Oscar B fuel tanks to minimize vortex drag? Um, vortex drag is an interesting take on it. Actually, it's uh, what I would consider it is the area rule. This is actually fairly bad in terms of the area rule. So the area rule is to minimize... <laughs> Uh, drag during the transonic region, you want a fairly constant flow in the increase and decrease in area. And where we have problems here are the intakes, obviously, suddenly the surface area, the cross-sectional area, I should say, the cross-sectional area increases dramatically, and that's not super wonderful. Of course, at the end of the Oscar B fuel tanks, we suddenly have a drop off in surface area, uh, sorry, cross-sectional cross area. So yes, uh, to deal with that, we would uh, probably put uh, something there. So obviously the primary problem was drag, somebody said, and I'm not uh, optimizing for how the drag cube system in KSP works. Uh, I was a little bit confused because people said that it was the nodes that KSP uh, aerodynamics depended on. And in theory, these parts, all of these parts, only have a surface attached node, and that should be occupied, right? If they have drag cubes on them, however, then they would produce more drag. But if it was just based on the attachment node, that, that node is occupied, so these do not have a free node on them, unlike the Oscar B fuel tank. That does have a free node on it and could pro cause problems. Uh, this core also has a free node on it that could cause problems. Uh, but if these have drag cubes on them, then that's a different story and they can cause drag. Of course, I tried to shield this. I, I wish the aerodynamic system took into consideration where the airflow is coming from when determining drag, but I guess that's, that's not a thing. So the fact that I've shielded it with the nose cone on the front end might not make any difference. There are a lot of peculiarities of stock aerodynamics that I'm not up up to date on, let me say. Uh, you know, I had vaguely heard about the orientation of the wheels having a difference uh, once upon a time. But what they have changed and what they have kept the same, I'm not familiar with. So some things haven't been improved. The original node system for calculating drag was actually pre-1.0, and I thought they had actually change that somewhat in 1.0 as far as how drag was calculated but anyway so the details are obviously better covered by other streamers and uh, youtubers but i'll introduce my puck 7 which is an improved version i think first of all it occurred to me that we might lose control if we were relying on the antenna the commutron 88-88 that we have if we are just going uncrewed to lathe and so I think we'll have crew. I do need a ladder over here. There's still things that I forget. Um, so we are going to have crew but we have a surplus of scientists <laughs> so we're going to send a scientist as our crew not a pilot. We only have one pilot available and 
to that end, obviously, I've got a cargo bay. I don't know if I can put the parachutes in the cargo bay like this, but we're going to find out. Obviously, now I've got a solar panel in the cargo bay, and we'll open it up X37B style. And we've got the probe core here because we do want SAS capability that the scientists will not be able to provide. And the batteries, of course. So that's all in there now. Um, but we are carrying the extra mass of the cockpit. That it's heavier. And we have one rapier because somebody said they, they got like 36 tons per rapier. And I go, oh, I'm not going to get 36 tons per rapier. But um, all right. Well, we'll try this first, and then if we need to put two engines, we'll put two engines. But, of course, putting one engine left me with a uh, conundrum. I didn't want two intakes. And so we've got one intake at the bottom. So, once again, I've changed things up quite a bit. Here we have closed off the back node here with a nose cone. So that's all aerodynamic-ish. Uh, I've put a larger wing in deference to the fact that maybe Lathe, because it has a thinner atmosphere, we'd have a tr tougher time with it. So I do want a better glide ratio for lathe in particular. This might not be necessary for Kerbin. Uh, somebody suggested angle of incidence on the wings. We'll have to see what angle it might need, given this is a completely different configuration now. Um, the only thing, my only concern is that, first of all, angle of incidence is not great. And angle of instance means tilting it up like that, basically. And you can see uh, one problem is that it messes up the reading for the center of lift. I don't act. I don't know how stock curb uh, stock uh, aerodynamics deals with angle of incidence. Actually, it's very suspicious uh, the way the center of lift moves there. I don't know whether I should trust it or not. But uh, that's way too dramatic for one thing. But supersonic planes don't have a whole lot of angle of incidence because it creates a lot of drag. Uh, the person who suggested angle of incidence suggested. Uh, optimizing it for 320 meters per second in the transonic region, which is great. But then once you get really fast, uh, the angle of the wings is going to have increased drag. So a lot of times planes that are going supersonic don't have too much of that. We might want some dihedral, though, um, for stability's sake. Having a completely flat wing is uh, hmm, not the most wonderful thing always. We are carrying heavier landing gear because of the low slung engine configuration. So that's an uh, issue. I might want to move the center of lift even further back. But at least on the bright side, I don't think the center of mass is going to move behind this. Uh, I might move the wheels a little bit further back too. Okay, um, I have to hope that we don't scrape the air intake off. Uh, when we land or anything, but the wheelbase should pre should prevent that. Should should, but yeah. All right. Well, fortunately, we have a lot of scientists. <laughs> so Luton, Luton is our least uh, experienced scientist. So there we go. Let's see what happens with this plane. Okay. So. Mostly people said just uh, keep a certain angle, like 20 degrees off the ground, and continue on. So I won't... Uh, we'll see if we can do that. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. Okay, let's see if we can rotate. Okay, not bad. That's a fairly low... Um, takeoff speed, so that bodes well. Somebody said 20 degrees, I'll go 20 degrees, fine. We are accelerating at that, though not very fast. I still feel that we are too heavy for a single one, and maybe uh, that, uh, that person who went with the 20 degree number said weight of plane and we're about 20 tons. Divide by number of rapiers equals 10.2. But somebody else said, like, lots of tons per rapier. So, I'm getting mixed signals sometimes. I am aware that the rapiers add thrust uh, past um, the transonic region. I know how these kinds of engines work, in theory. Yeah, I don't think we're going to do well if we keep to that. We were a little bit heavier than expected there. 
so let me just gain some more speed first. At least we can still go up at this angle. We don't have that much of an angle attack, so if we were to add angle of instance, it's not going to be more than maybe four degrees or something like that. This is like one of those cruise missiles with the underslung shock cone intake. It's curious that we have some lateral deviation. You know, that the prograde vector is a little bit off to the left there. I am not going to watch another YouTuber to figure this out. I'll, I'll rely on you guys in the comments, but I'm not going to go to somebody else's video. I'd rather... There's no point then, right? I mean, then... I'm just copying and not developing. There's no experimentation going on at that point. So, yeah, I might as well just quit at that point. I'll just stick to RO. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to go to somebody else's videos and watch what they do and copy it. That's not going to happen. Yeah, I don't know if we have some spare drag on here that I'm not aware of. Maybe the landing gear. I mean, um, we, we've got a pretty slick, except for maybe the air intake as and uh, the air brake. I'm sorry as well. Um, but I don't think one engine is enough. But we'll see. We're gonna go ahead and accelerate here. At least we're accelerating while going up. If we can keep doing that somewhat, but it's really sticky here. I might take off the outside delta and move the control surfaces in. We have a lot more angle of attack now than previously, which is interesting. Doesn't do well in thinner atmosphere, clearly. I think I'm gonna just abort this. This is clearly not doing as well as I need it to. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna test the parachute system. Luton's gonna love this. I'm sort of tempted to do it over the island runway since that's bumpier terrain. Okay, I'll get the cargo bay ready for opening just in case I need to. Okay, uh, first attempt. Nope, can't deploy while stowed. Okay. Now? Okay, now we can. Alright. Um... Well, this isn't the best orientation. Hmm. I think my parachute placement could do with some work. I don't know why it wants to sort of lean to one side. Even during flight it did. Don't tell me it's just the ladder. <laughs> the ladder is that powerful? I don't know. Now, we would be coming down at a higher speed on lathe. Obviously, this is not ideal so we need more parachutes up front the front uh, but you know if we put the rapier a, a second rapier that's gonna change things so we'll have to see uh, let's see yeah come on stay there this is a bit dodgy oh gosh not nose first oh ow oh 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 brakes brakes well, I guess we're intact, though. I need a cut-shoot one. I guess maybe not. Alright. Okay, well, we're intact. <laughs> um, hmm. Alright, uh, let me recover. As far as using a more efficient engine, I'd like as little engine mass as possible, but it's a thought. Now, the trouble with using, uh, say, a Terrier is, you know, extra mass and everything. I mean, I didn't feel like we were getting a huge amount of lift as it is, but it could cut out some drag if we take out the outer wing bit. Now, the center of mass appears to be very centered on the on the cargo bay. Do we need to carry more parachutes? I don't know. We could put two more on the back wall. 
I think I might slide these a little bit further back. Hopefully they're being included. You guys will have to tell me whether it is how it's supposed to work or not. I mean, I can bring up the aerodynamic overlay, but I I don't have a baseline to compare it with. Okay, uh... Puck 8. <laughs> Puck 8 time. Okay. Uh, well, it seems a little bit indecisive whether it wants to stay down. Oh, no. I think I need to move the landing gear. I mean, I have taken the advice into consideration. I have removed things from the surface. They are now in a cargo bay. I hope that's how it's supposed to be. This is supposed to be better, right? Okay. Throttle up. SAS on. Ignition. I bet Luton didn't expect this was what she'd be getting as a scientist in the space agency, but here we are. Come on. I'll, I'll go with, let's say... That much. I forgot about the angle of incidence. Let's go like that first. Climb a little bit more. Uh, some people said wait till you get to 400 meters per second before climbing. I'm just gonna try and... I, I don't like climbing against a whole lot of drag personally. But again, my instincts and stock may need to consider exactly how much liquid fuel we want to... You know, because we're carrying a little bit of spare liquid fuel in these tanks here. But we don't carry that much. So I might want to consider how much we're doing there. Well, it's sure accelerating. How much is safe, though? That's the question. How much till we overheat and explode? Again, a little bit of leftward deviation here. I mean, maybe I'm rolled a bit. 1,200. Thousand three hundred. Let's see what the thrust is. 14, 13. I'll switch to rocket mode now. So that was better. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, ah, sorry, I was a little bit too abrupt there. Eek, eek, eek. We could probably do better. Um, I think we should pitch up more than that, actually. Oh, I put two rapiers, but only one intake. Is that bad, or should I just keep it to one intake? That's another question for you guys. Is one intake enough? I mean, what what more performance could we get out of it with two intakes instead, or are we risking more drag in that case? Part well, of the thing is, I mean, of course, how it does on lathe is the question. We can get into orbit here, but we have to be able to do the same around lathe. Current lathe aren't that different, but they are different. We clearly have an oxidizer surplus, but for the transfer to lathe, that's not a problem. So I will refuel this at this point, and then we will see what kind of delta V we get from it based on the refueling because I, I didn't actually check that stat before. What What is that light? Does the landing gear still has light on? No, oh, I just turned light emission off and it's still producing that light. So, hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, that's peculiar. All right. Uh, anyway, like I said, we're going to send a claw refueler up to this and I'll top it off and see what kind of... Oh, and I'll take the mob propellant out. <laughs> I 
I'll have to claw refuel or take the modifier balance out. Yeah. And then we'll see whether it's got enough juice for a dual mission. And again, maybe, you know, uh, we could put a like spark on the bottom here and a spark on the top or something to improve performance for the transfer, but uh, does the spark's bottom node create drag then? I don't even know. Once we attach it, is it going to create more drag? All the peculiarities. Anyway, let me get a refueler set up. Okay, well, this is an unfortunate looking sort of thing, but you know how I hate to do the same thing twice. <laughs> so uh, here we go. Uh, the refueler's in there. It's a recoverable refueler, so it's sort of capsule shaped. And we're going with a skipper and four thumpers. So SAS on, throttle up, and launch. Lots of get up and go this time. I'm in the mood for thrust to weight ratio, let's face it. Probably should have had the boosters go for longer. That's an interesting blue on the skipper. I'll just carry them a little. Eh, uh, let's let them go. Oh, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's okay. We're good. Okay, fairing set. Went with confetti this time. I don't really want to coast to Apoapsis and do another burn, but I think that's what we're going to do. We should... We'd like to be in a lower orbit than the space plane, but actually it's pretty low already, so... Maybe a much higher orbit would be better. Anyway, I've got an antenna there using the grabbing unit junior this time. Let's see... This might actually be a good thing to grab some of the debris close to Kerbin. Though, I probably should fit more than two parachutes on it if we're going to do that. Occurs to me now that we don't have a reaction wheel. <laughs> well, good thing we have mod propellant. Okay, that's good enough. 1.8 kilometers within render range. We've still got the skipper to match orbits with it. How's our power doing? Not great, but we're on the nighttime side. And now we're recharging. And I guess we will have to use some RCS here. And actually, I want to deorbit the skipper stage. Okay, that will deorbit the skipper stage. Separation. We want to reverse control for now. So, control point reversed. This is tough without reaction wheels. It's almost like realism overhaul. Okay, render range at long last. And now I'm really not using SES. I haven't been for a while because I wanted to spare my mod propellant. Though we've probably used more fuel than I was intending for the rendezvous. And now I'll use SES. Oh, that's using a lot more propellant than I wanted. Maybe using SAS was a bad idea. Well, this has become generally a bad situation thanks to the lack of a reaction wheel and... I should have used the smaller RCS ports, come to think of it. Okay, just three units of mop propellant left, and we're deviating. I don't know, I just I need to claw something. It doesn't matter what. <laughs> mm. Uh. Okay, plane, can you like turn or something so that it's more likely to hit you? Let's come to this. 
Right. Okay, we got it. <laughs> this is so horrible. That was so horrible. Okay, fine. Uh, do we? Okay, can we transfer? All right, it is connected. It looks. It looks very haphazard, but here we are. Okay, and then we can top off this one. Obviously, we carried too much oxidizer. Yeah, we'll just leave that be. Okay, let's see what kind of delta V we have with the space plane now. Everything else is fine. Oh, shoot. I forgot to transfer the a propellant. Ah, uh, now we don't have... Uh, we can't deorbit this. Gosh darn it. <laughs> and we can't rendezvous with it again. Oh, shucks. All right. Well, anyway, um, the point. The point is it only says we have 1939 meters per second, so it's not good enough. I just don't have enough fuel on here. We could take out some more dry mass. Uh, even if we topped off this tank, I don't think it's enough to be safe for a dual transfer. So we're we're all topped off, but I don't think it's a good situation to go to dual with. And maybe maybe we should switch to having. Maybe we should just make a bigger space plane. <laughs> maybe we should just make a bigger space plane. But then it's gonna be harder to land. Hmm. Well, anyway, maybe there are some further improvements that can be made to this. You guys can give me your thoughts. Maybe we can make the wing just a straight delta instead of a double delta like this. And we'll think about that. But, yep, so the development of the puck continues. And I'm sure you guys will have feedback, and I'll read it. And we'll see what we can do. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll think of all the options we will consider all the options so with that thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and i'll see you next time